Thanks, Skylar. And and as I always say, uh, Lean Frontiers do quite a bit of work behind the scenes in making one of these happen, and I really appreciate it. So thanks, thanks heaps, Skylar. So uh, before I introduce these three gentlemen, you can see they all work for Story Construction. Story Construction is a construction project management company based in Ames, Iowa, who I've been doing some work for for uh, two or three years. <clears throat> Pat Geary, who's the COO, has presented uh, at two or three Cardacons and presented at the most recent. So up in top left of the screen, we've got Troy Turner, who's the project manager. Top right of the screen, well, it is on mine anyway, I should say. <clears throat> we've got Jeff Reams, who's a project manager, and we've got Andy Ingram, who's warehouse manager down the bottom left of the screen. Now, we had a group of 10 attend JR training, job relations training in March. And at the, or partway through that training, um, one of the things I emphasized was that there was going to be follow up both face to face and uh, live online once I got back uh, home to Australia. So each of the participants was given three options. Let me share my screen so I can show you what those three options were. And they were to choose one. The first is that they are given this employee matrix and thanks Art Smalley for helping uh, put some ideas behind developing this. So with the employee matrix, they put the names of the direct reports across the top here. And then going down for each direct report, they rate their uh, four attributes, output, attitude, relationships, problem solving, judgment. Um, from naught, from one to five, where five is exceptional and one is very bad. And then what I ask them to do is to pick one of those people and start applying the principles of job relations, in particular the foundations, but they set an objective and so on and so forth, um, to one of those employees. Now, I've also encouraged them not necessarily to pick a one with a low score, because if we create, build everyone up from low scores, then we create a set of averages. So I quite often encourage them to, get, to choose a three or a four rating and see if you can get them to a five, <clears throat> because it's the, through that we create exceptional, exceptional teams. So this is one of their options. The second option is to simply use the JR pattern on another issue they need to handle another opportunity or a problem they need to handle. Now, I know there's various forms that float around for job relations um, practice, uh, some more formal than others. I've, uh, we've made this form exactly the same as the whiteboard pattern. The reason is the, white, the mind is a pattern seeking mechanism. During the training, they've seen it 14 times. So I'm not gonna change the pattern that they are to follow when they apply the four step pattern for handling a people problem. So that was the second option. And the third option is to pick one of the four foundations that they feel they're not applying well or could apply better and really focus in on that and develop some routines and habits around one of those four foundations, one or more of those foundations. So they were the three options they were given. They, they were put into pairs. Um, and the reason they were put into pairs is because then they can collaborate and work, uh, you know, bounce ideas off each other. So now, brief introduction by me, over to them, Jeff. What were your thoughts on the training, first of all, and then what have you done since? And what's gone well, what hasn't gone well, what have you learned? So uh, I guess thoughts on the training, you know, the, the example that we went through, um, I used, uh, I picked an employee that, that currently is on my team and we went through and tried to utilize uh, his positive attributes and how they fit uh, best in the team. So in doing that, we used your uh, employee matrix and uh, we went through, uh, my partner and I, and rated uh, the attributes. And again, we wanted to focus on uh, the most positive attributes. And so, uh, from that, we then transitioned to the, the four-step process, um, and we went through that four-step process uh, to, de to determine um, where that employee uh, could best utilize their assets within, uh, within the team. So, Jeff, uh, that was your objective, to best, to best utilize this employee's 
um, positive attributes. Correct. That was right. the objective is to identify the positive attributes and then align those skills uh, within the work that we needed to complete. Sure. Um, and so uh, we went through that uh, and that was, uh, that was successful. Um, since then, uh, I've used uh, the four-step process. Uh, when you say it was successful, what were the signals that you saw for you to be able to say that? We were able to determine um, quick, more quickly how the, how the attributes would be able to uh, fit within the team. So it wasn't necessarily successful as far as the outcome, but it was no, no, successful no. In, in determining uh, the decisions that needed to be made and where the person would fit. Does that sure. make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the outcome, I think if I remember rightly, the person got moved. <laughs> yes. So ultimately the person, the, the person got moved, but yes. um, the, that was an, that was more of an outside. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was outside influence. Um, but as far <laughs> so the, one of the, in but, terms of a practice platform, in terms of a practice case, um, that's what you mean by successful, because, you know, we're talking about doing this training and then getting and the practice is important so when you say successful it was the practice pat platform that was that was uh, allowed you to to see how you can use these patterns yeah we were able to identify results so even yeah. though so we put something in place and to be honest we got mixed results yes and so then we would uh follow we followed up with an expectation meeting and kind of reiterated uh this uh, where this employee fit um and then, and so I would say the decision making around that uh, was much more clear. Yeah, sure. That, and Jeff, that, that uh, during sense. the training, I, I talked about JR being linear, but actually it's cyclical uh, in its application. I think you've just illustrated that. Do you remember that discussion? And can you just relate that to what you just said a minute or two ago? Correct. Uh, so we would go through, you know, uh, I said we would, um, we set, a, I would say, a standard or an expectation, and, and that person was put in a position to succeed. Um, they were given, a, given assignments. We would then, we then did an evaluation period in which uh, we determined that the employee was maybe 50% um, successful. We then reiterated the expectations. And so that's where I think it then, then it kind of starts over again in which we exactly. reiterated the, the, the expectations and now they were going through, they were in the process of going through that process again. We would have then, if they would have stayed on the team, been able to do another evaluation um, in, in the future. So that's that cycle that I'm talking about that, um, that, we, that we set up that, uh, follows, uh, let's say, the, the JR pattern. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So what my point there for participants is we learn it linearly. We learn it linearly, but the reality is we very rarely kick a goal first time around. It's then applied. We learn it linearly. We, it's applied cyclically, and Jeff has just described that. Thanks. So I interrupted. Keep going. Then you've taken those learnings, and what have you? what else have you done? So from those learnings, I, I currently have another uh, four-step process going on right now. You probably can't see, but in the board behind me is a bunch, bunch of uh, write-ups. And basically, what that is is a is another pro is another issue. Um, uh, the topic is to uh, I've got two new leaders on my team um, that I'm transitioning leadership to, and so uh, the goal was to improve uh, the independent decision making uh, of those two members. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, I went through uh, step one, uh, I established facts, I then brought in the two participants and uh, got more facts um, from their perspective. And then uh, went on and I'm kind of right now in, I've completed way, way into side, which is step two, but haven't quite got to, to step three and, and taking the actions. Um, so from when you got them in, when you got them in Jeff, uh, mm -hmm. step one, and you got their opinions and feelings, 
Did you, did anything surprise you? Yes. So um, we have a, a construction process called CP 2.0. I would say their knowledge of that process was not as in depth as I as I uh, had had assumed. And so um, that was something that would be quite important as they move into this role that um, I assumed that they were further along in that process than than they were. And so that helps me then um, coach them moving forward. Yeah, it gives you some possible, it, it sort of direct, it gives you some hints of some possible actions. Correct. Yeah, beautiful. Jeff, in the interest of time, thank you. Um, yeah. Troy, same question to you. Thoughts on the training and then more importantly, just very brief on that. More importantly, what have you done since? That's, yeah. that's yep. what we want to know. Yep. So the training has been very helpful. Uh, one way I look at stuff like that is it's another tool in the toolbox to uh, construction metaphor. And whatever walk of life we're in or wherever we're working, we need lots of tools in our toolbox. So the more we can put in there, the better prepared we are for life. Uh, as far as a problem that I tackled, I want to use a four-step process to handle what I perceived could be uh, a people problem. And the problem I had identified is one of my teammates is uh, young and new in his career. He's by nature pretty quiet and reserved. And uh, we need to help him grow to become more vocal and be able to speak in front of groups and, and lead people. And part of leading is, is speaking. One of, <laughs> one of the things that, uh, that I was perceiving is that perhaps folks like myself and one of my other teammates who are further along in our careers are answering for that young person and not letting that person speak. And so I wanted to make sure that wasn't the case. Uh, we want we want this new young person to be independent. So and, that was your objective there, Troy. Some yep. around that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. So it's an interesting thing. So step one, get the facts, and so I started gathering facts. And part of that process uh, spoke with the young person who I perceived maybe uh, wasn't given the opportunity to speak as often as he should. And through that, I figured out he didn't feel that way at all. He felt <laughs> like um, he felt like, no, you guys uh, aren't in my way, um, and I'm I'm getting plenty of opportunity to speak. And I, and I have witnessed him do that. Um, so, so, Troy, what what interests me about that is, had you not had that conversation with him and got his opinions and feelings. I'm putting words in your mouth here uh, uh, clearly, but your possible actions would have been vastly different and may have been counterproductive. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I could have easily gone to another person in our team who I thought was maybe speaking too much and tried to address that when I yeah. really need to address that. Sure. Sorry, keep going. I interrupted. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. I'm just stressing the stressing the value of getting personal opinions and feelings. It's not something we tend to do well. And um, and when we do get them, we sometimes can dismiss them if they're not the same as our own. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, I think there's a lesson there. It's like you got to be patient enough to ask the questions and figure out what's really going on rather than just jump right to a conclusion. Sure, sure. Uh, so in my case, once I gathered the facts and figured out it really isn't a problem, uh, I turned the card over and went to uh, Foundations for Good Relations. And and this gave, um, it was a good venue and time to really talk to this young person about how is he really doing. Uh, honestly, to give him a lot of credit because I've seen him doing some really good things as far as speaking up and being the voice of our company. Um, and then it also is an in instance to use um, his gifts and talents to the best of his ability because he also ends up uh, being bilingual. 
And that's a very, oh, yeah, that. very valuable thing to have um, in our industry, in our country, is being bilingual. And so, honestly, it, it's given him more opportunity to speak in front of groups of people where that skill is needed. Perfect. And how has he responded since, since you know, in this last six weeks or so? How has he responded? Yeah, uh, so I've seen uh, definitely his confidence goes up. Um, he's more apt to come talk to me and ask me questions. So I think there's a level of trust that's gone up. He he trusts me more now than a few weeks ago, just through this interaction. Yeah, Troy, you've touched on something that's vitally important, uh, we believe in JR. And I know we talked about it as a group, that when you build trust, communication starts to flow without you having to drag it, if you like, for want of a better word. And I think you're, it seems like you're experience, experiencing it yeah. uh, in this situation. Yep, for sure. Yes, yeah, spot on. Troy, thank you. Um, Andy, is there anything else you wanted to add there, Troy? What have you done since with the learn? Yeah, so uh, one of, the, there's probably two things. I feel like I've got this little person sitting on um, my shoulder named Oscar. Uh, reminding me that, hey, we've got this process, slow down and use it. And then honestly, I keep this right here next to me on my desk as a reminder each day. Thank you for that compliment. And um, and one thing for you, that, for you, for Jeff and Troy, is their project managers, which would tend to indicate by title that you're managing the project as such, which you are, but the reality is, and I know we talked about this during the training, um, the reality is that you're managing the project through people. So your results are coming through people. So do both of you just want to, was that a bit of, was that, uh, again, words in your mouth, is that, was that a bit confrontational or, or you're already aware, we, we're already well aware of that? The fact that you well, get I, results through people. Yeah, that, I'd say that's an evolution through, through my career. Uh, yeah, when right. I was first young project manager, I uh, felt more like I needed to do everything myself. And then as I grew and matured and started to realize, oh, no, this is really about leading people and being a facilitator of, of leadership is is kind of how it evolved for me. Sure. Uh, um, of which trust is absolutely foundational, I imagine, absolutely. In, in, for all of us, but particularly in your game. Jeff, do you want to comment on what I just said then about that results through people? Has that made it? Have you had, have you, yeah, would you like to comment? Yeah. So I think um, for me, I, I quickly found myself uh, um, when issues would come up, just solving the issue. And um, I've always viewed trying to accomplish the task through people. But I didn't. I didn't view solving the issue quickly as as being a problem. From the perspective of I need to facilitate that person to go through the thinking process to solve it on her on their own and facilitate that way, rather than uh, me um, having to be the solution to to the problems that that come up. So, although I did view as view it as using using others to accomplish a task i wasn't necessarily doing it in the most effective way because I, there's a lot more long-term gains as you coach people through a decision or an issue um, than simply answering it myself they move forward they don't gain the the knowledge uh, of going through the process and and learning how to navigate that sure good <clears throat> well done thank you andy last but certainly not least so andy as i said is the warehouse manager um, with story construction in ames andy what th which of the three well your thoughts on the training very briefly but then what which of the three options or more than one of the three did you choose and what if what's happened and what have you learned okay so what i thought of the training was very eye-opening um it was definitely a 
like Troy said, another tool for the toolbox. Um, so I would say that, you know, there's there's multiple ways to look at an issue. So um, from from going through this, it has opened up my eyes to uh, a, a certainly an easier way to go through and figure out, you know, determine your objective and figuring out what you need to get done. You know what what you want to get done and how to get there. It's been a great tool. So I think you've uh, touched on something it. just before you go on. I think you've touched yep. on something important there. Is that what we tend to do? And I'm as guilty as anyone is. We tend to jump in straight away, without asking ourselves. You know, when the dust has settled, what does good look like? What do I want out of this? You know, we've got this situation. What do I want in a month's time or a week's time? What does it look like when the dust has settled? So just that little break. If hang on, let's identify that uh, you, that you touched on. Then I think that's a very valuable, um, a valuable outcome for, for yeah, you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's about take take a breath, you know, yes. and and gather all the information. Don't just go with what you're thinking about because yeah. that's not all the information. There's many more sources that will come at you if you take the time to open your ears and listen. If you ask the right questions, you'll get that information. And you used a good word earlier. You said perspectives. And uh, one of the things we focus heavily on is that there's no wrong perspective. No, no. I mean, just like what we had talked about, you know, uh, it, it, that's, their, that's true to them. You know, whatever yes. they're thinking, that is their truth. That is what they believe 100%, whether that is correct or not. They they determined that that is factual. So that is their facts. That is what they're going to go with, you know, and that's why you got to gather the rest of the facts to come up to determine what the um, possible outcomes could be. So, sure. so keep going on. What did you, what was your focus? And so and what did my, you do? Main, what did you... my main focus was going to be on the foundations, right? So I am not new in this role, but I'm newer in this role. So I need to establish the foundations in order to uh, create good relationships. Uh, so that way we can get the the production and the work through our folks that, that is desired. So uh, in particular, I uh, focused on the very first foundation, which is let each worker know how he or she is doing. And in doing that, I actually decided to focus on one individual out of the, the folks that report to me. And doing that, it, it allowed me to focus more on, on you know, all of the things that we talked about in class. Um, so uh, the number one thing was figure out what you expect out of the person. Um, so doing that, um, I would say, so we had, this is just an example, uh, last week we had a crane move that uh, happened on a Saturday. Okay, so um, I would say we knew about this a couple of weeks ahead of time. So a couple of weeks ago, I came out to them, and this is a different uh, foundation. Let them know about you know things that were uh, going to be coming, what what uh, is coming up. It's going to directly affect these folks. So I let them know about it, and as soon as I found out, I let them know about it. Um, but in that conversation, uh, I had the conversation with them saying, this is this is what I expect. The expectation is that we will get this crane tour part Saturday morning, uh, get all the parts and pieces back to the river lot, get everything unloaded. That is the expectation. Um, you know, and then I allowed time uh, for them to process everything. And then like a week later, we touched on it again, just to bring it back up in conversation to see how they were feeling about it, you know, see if they had any discrepancies, if they were, you know, finding any way that we could possibly do it to improve or to do something different. Um, and I would say the emotion of this individual that I started off with, that um, I would say his emotion, it kind of surprised me, to be honest with you. Uh, it, 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 I wouldn't even say it really spiked. I mean, I got a little bit of a rise out of them, but I was really anticipating a lot more because uh, this person has a young family at home uh, and has a side business as well. 
Um, however, so, sa so Saturday morning could potentially been a problem if it was a surprise. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause he could have already had work lined up for the weekend. He could have, yeah. you know, had a day date with his daughter and his son, whatever the case may be. So as soon as I found out about it, that's why I was like, all right, I gotta let these guys know because this is very important. This is affecting their, uh, home life essentially. Right. Yeah. So. I thought it was very important to let them know about that. Um, anyway, so going back into the conversation we had about a week later, I would say that um, nobody really um, had any discrepancies about it. Everyone was like, yep, no, uh, we mobilized a crane in during the week, and they realized why we want to do it on a weekend. Because yes. mobilizing that crane in during the week, it's on a campus, uh, there's 100,000 people you know, in that area, not 100,000, there's probably, I don't know, maybe 50,000 kids or so. Anyway, going to the school and they're all over. They're not yeah. paying attention. You know, they're typical kids, hands, you know, full of devices, looking down, not paying attention. So that being said, you know, we had a conversation after they mobilized the crane in there. We're like, all right, uh, is there any questions? They're like, no, we get it why we're doing it on Saturday. It's way less busy. There's not so many uh, people you got to be aware of because they're the pedestrians, so they have the right of way, um, you know, accidents and safety and, and you know, just keeping everything on the forefront and having to watch everything while you're driving a semi and taking a crane down. So it, 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 it I think it kind of came full circle with them yeah, after right. we moved a crane in and then they're like, oh, okay. I get why we have to do this on Saturday. That makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, and so. I think I think what you're touching on, I'm just conscious of time, Andy. I think what you're touching on there is that as leaders, we have to sometimes communicate news that's not going to be, uh, may not be well received. And we're doing ourselves a favour and other people a favour if we tell them in advance and tell them why and give them a chance to let you know how they feel and, and any thoughts on that. So that's... I think that's yep. what you've illustrated there, and that was really well done. Yep. Just to finish, and you've sort of half touched on this, Andy, uh, Harad Berenson, who's a GP in Europe with the Institute, has asked a question. <clears throat> and his question is, what have participants changed in their daily agenda or practice to ensure they're using some of the foundations for good relations. So would any of you like to comment on that? In other words, what he's hunting for is, you know, what's a routine, what's what's a routine change that's not just a one-off that uh, has occurred for any of you based on the foundations? So for me in particular is um, being more free with information. Yeah, right. You know, not, not holding it all up here, but getting it out and, but not overwhelmingly. Sure. So, that's, yeah, so you've that's, moved a bit. You're not moved from here to there. You've moved a bit. Right. Is, yeah. It's, it's not, here's everything I'm thinking. No, here's yeah. one piece of what's going on. So that's that they important have, to them. Yes. To, to, so they have full circle on what's, what's going on on certain yeah. things. Troy or Jeff. For me, um, I think it's foundation, uh, the fourth one, make best use of each person's ability. We all have gifts and talents that have been given to us or we've built up through our lifetime. And being more aware of that and trying to use the gifts that our teammates have uh, so they can thrive and our teams can thrive. Spot on. And Jeff, did you? I think you. Yeah, for me, uh, I think Troy touched on it earlier, and, and I did as well. I did as well. Um, but it's it's slowing down. It's not jumping to conclusions, and it's it's using the four step process uh, okay. when issues come up, and allowing yourself um, the time to go through that process, and and I use it quite a bit. As you can see, I've got a I've got an issue on my board. Uh, the card sits on my on my desk, and so um, as people come in and ask questions, um, we I make a decision whether this is a, a topic for the process, and if it is, and then and then we slow down and we use it. Where before, um, just very easy to to answer questions and move on. Sure. What well, one last thing? I'll go on, Troy, please. Uh, we also our our team that went through the trainings, getting together. 
uh, once a week to talk about what we're doing. And it's the idea is that it helps force us to practice this and keep yes. it top of mind until it becomes habit. Sure. Well said. Um, because yeah, it takes deliberate practice and yeah, the habits are developed through deliberate practice. So it's this deliberate practice that you're talking about. And just for participants, one point I will make there, that's led by um, Pat Geary, who's the COO, who's 150% uh, convinced of the importance of patterns like this. So that's certainly, he's a uh, you know, top of the tree and it does, it is in their story's favor that you've got someone at the um, top of the tree uh, driving something like this. Jeff, Troy, Andy, thank you very, very much for only not only this half an hour, but what you did, uh, <clears throat> but what you did, um, you know, your participation during the training and what you've done since, and also to the other seven who are involved. I, I'm very impressed with your, your application as a whole. So thank you. Thanks for giving us the time. Lean Frontiers, Skylar, thank you very much for putting this on and doing all the logistics. Uh, much appreciated.